And now, to get us started, we are very lucky to have Kai Morten Terning, who is the State Secretary here in Norway for Consumer Affairs. So, welcome to this seminar on commercial use on co of com consumer data. First of all, I want to welcome our distinguished participants from Europe, Wolfi Christel from Germany and Max Krems from Austria. They are both experts on this topic. I would also like to mention Jan Philipp Albrecht from Germany, who will join us today on Skype. We are living in an economy where personal data has become the new currency. As we speak, Information about us is being bought and sold on global exchanges. So we are not only consumers in the data economy, we are also the product being sold. My ministry is responsible for the consumer policy in Norway. One of our main priorities is to ensure that consumer protection is respected and preserved in the digital economy. Projects in cooperation with the Norwegian Consumer Council has been a central part of this agenda. I would especially like to thank the, them for organizing this seminar. The purpose of this seminar is to try to answer some important questions. Who's, who is gathering the information? What do they want? And how are we tracked? What are the consequences? And what can be done? Big data has become big business. Personal data such as location or habits it's a valuable asset. And we are seeing data collection at an extraordinary scale. We are under constant surveillance when we use our computers, our smartphones, or other devices. With the Internet of Things, more and more products will be connected. Our car, our fitness devices, or may maybe even our fridge will collect our data. The marketing industry used information to tailor targeted advertisement to all of us. Sensitive information about health or well-being can be valuable for insurance companies. U.S. companies like Google and Facebook are the biggest data collectors. But companies in Norway and Europe are working to close the gap. The data economy can, can contribute to jobs and growth. But it's also important that consumers don't trade away basic rights in the process. And here are some of the main problems for the consumers. The service collecting data have a long, complicated, and often unreasonable terms and conditions. This makes it very difficult for the consumer to give informed uh, consent. The service will collect more data than necessary and often share this data with unspecified third parties. As a consequence, consumers lose control of their data. The services make it difficult or sometimes even impossible to remove your account or information. It is also difficult to move your data from one service to another, hindering competition. The work of the Consumer Council shows that consumers are concerned about privacy and consumer rights online, but they feel powerless in the face of lengthy terms and conditions. So what can be done to improve the situation for the consumer? It is important that service providers and entrepreneurs take privacy and consumer protection seriously. I hope the Norwegian actors will stand out as a good example. This applies to the business, but also to organizations like ICT Norway and Abelia. It could be a good idea to unite behind a common norm with guidelines to Norwegian actors. Our government has signaled an ambition to improve the privacy of consumers in our white paper, A Digital Agenda for Norway. That's why we are fi financing this seminar, and that's why we have given the Consumer Council additional grants to examine the safeguarding of, of consumer rights in the markets for apps and Internet of Things. I believe that protection of privacy and consumer rights go hand in hand online. Therefore, I'm glad to see that Data Protection Authority and the Consumer Authorities in Norway working closely together on this topic. In conclusion, the digital economy represents great opportunities for businesses and consumers. But from the consumer perspective, we simply can't give up the consum uh, basic consumer rights in order to make use of products and services of the future. On the contrary, 
Enhancing consumer safety and data protection should be seen as a way to facilitate growth in terms of users and in terms of market potential in the digital economy. We will continue our work to ensure that consumer protection is respected in the digital economy. And we open for new suggestions on how to accommodate our policies towards this goal. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. And thank you very much. Now, next on stage, I'm going to introduce you to the man who's basically been the mastermind behind all of today's event. And he is from the Norwegian Consumer Council, Finn Merstad, who is the director of digital policy. Finn. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you all for coming. This is really, really amazing. Uh, uh, when we started uh, thinking about this event, uh, we thought we'll have a small event uh, at Literaturhuset. Uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, 50, 100 people will come and we'll call, and call it a great success. Um, but uh, when we put this uh, seminar online, within a day there was 100 people who had signed up and we had to find another location. So it's great to see you all here at the Lotte today. Uh, we're going to try to bring you some excellent speakers with some excellent unique insights into this topic of data protection, privacy, and consumer rights in digital services. Um, as some of you might know, we have been working on this issue for quite a while. Uh, and the reason for that is because, as you all know, uh, digital services are becoming more and more prevalent and more and more important in consumers' lives. Everyone has a smartphone. More and more people have a fitness wearable device on themselves. We see the cars are being connected only on the news today. There was a big story about data protection, personal data, and car usage. The homes will be filled up with devices that are always on. Our lives are being quantified, put in numbers. Consumers are being put in categories, and advertising is sent to them, and decisions are made about who they are and what they likely are, and that has a huge impact potentially on their lives. So we decided we wanted to bring more knowledge into this debate because when we did our research on cloud storage services, we saw unreadable terms. We saw difficult terms. We saw terms that if you actually understood them, we didn't understand them and we read them for, for work. We saw that no one would accept this if they could. We did a project called AppFail this spring uh, where we analyzed 20 popular mobile apps, dating apps, fitness apps, and Mediano apps. And what we saw was how these unreadable terms really took away from users uh, basic consumer rights and basic rights to data protection and privacy. We thought this was unacceptable, of course, and we filed several complaints, one against Tinder for breaching consumer law. Tinder took the right to own all your content you uploaded on Tinder. And that's kind of problematic when Tinder is such a private service and you probably share quite a lot of intimate information. And I sat down uh, with my wife, I just married, and I said to her, I just have to log on to this dating app for research purposes. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever, Finn. Um, and I, I saw, and when I then clicked accept. I looked behind the scenes and said, what am I actually accepting to? And he said, all my, I think, 3,000 photos that I uploaded to Facebook over the last 10 years were automatically transferred to Tinder. And with the license they had to basically take ownership of all my content, Tinder could use all my photos for whatever they wanted. The good news is, the good news is, the Norwegian Consumer Ombudsman have gone into a dialogue with Tinder, and Tinder has since changed its terms. I think negotiations are still ongoing. And this gives us hope that it is possible to enforce consumer rights in Norway and in Europe against US companies. However, we did realize there was a huge limitation to our research. And that was because we also did technical research on all these apps. And we discovered from 20 apps, 600 other companies also received information about you and me when you use that app. Some of that information was completely legitimate because in a digital economy, a lot of services use cloud storage services from third party providers, completely legitimate. But we also found several apps that were doing things that was not okay. We found a banking app that was transferring some information to, Vip, uh, from to Facebook, 
Sorry, I wasn't going to say that. That's okay now, by the way. A great work by the NBA to fix that. Um, and we found that RunKeeper Fitness app was also transmitting your exact location data also when the app was not in use. This created a massive storm in the media, and RunKeeper subsequently changed the app for all the users all over the world. Again, it shows it's possible. But what it also showed us, people cannot do this on an everyday basis. You can't have a computer hacker to look at the data flows coming out of your phone. It's impossible. It's impossible also for us. So we need to understand the landscape behind. Why is this data being collected? And how is it used? We realized it was very difficult to understand how the data was used. And that's why we invited so many great experts here today to highlight some of the consequences that there could be, and there already are, for consumers around the world and also in Norway. With us today, we have a um, privacy activist and researcher, Wolfe Kristol, who is an amazing Austrian uh, uh, researcher. We just published a book on this. We have Max Schrems with us, who took Facebook to court all the way to the European Court of Justice. And we have many other amazing speakers. But we also don't want to, to focus only on the problems. We also want to focus on the solutions. We want to move forward. Uh, we don't want the industry uh, to uh, be in conflict with us all the time. So we also invited industry actors here today to discuss what can we do and how can we move forward. And hopefully, by the end of the day, uh, all of us will feel a little bit cleverer, a little bit smarter, and hopefully we will feel that we have moved the debate a step further. I think I'm running out of time. Am I? Yep. And um, we, are s uh, doing, uh, we are doing a switch in the program because... Uh, the amazing European Parliament politician who did the negotiation of the new data protection legislation is a bit late. Um, so we're going to do Wolfie Crystal first. I think he's ready. So with that, I hope you enjoy this conference. It is web streamed, but we decided um, none of you are being filmed. The cameras are just on stage. That's what we call privacy by design. <laughs> so you're not being filmed. So uh, you're all safe. And then I hope you enjoy this conference. Please tweet and, and, and join the discussion. I know Jennifer, our great host, is reading all the tweets. And hopefully you can engage with us that way. And please uh, sign up to our newsletter and get engaged and enjoy the day. Thank you so much. <laughs>